Good day all and welcome back to our YouTube channel, Everyday People's Voice, most especially to our subscribers and our returnees for being part of our outstanding news outlet that is devoted and committed to breaking the latest news and headlines to you as it comes. Yeah, we also bring to you news in politics, current affairs, business news, sports, entertainment and so much more around Nigeria and the world, including where and when they happen. Because, as you all know, our sources of information are reliable and accurate. That's why we are the window to the world. Thank you all for staying tuned. But before I go further, if this is your first time of coming across our channel, please be so kind to subscribe, like, and share our video. This video you are about to watch is a must-watch video. Please watch to the end so that you will get the in-depth analysis of everything. Let's watch the video, my people. Particular thing. I wanted to listen. I like to learn. Um, and I like learning every day. I wasn't invited. Kuka didn't invite me because I didn't call myself Eric. Um, but I saw an advert yesterday. That was why I came. Nothing to do with politics. I just thought I should come and learn because... Um, I'm in the Senate, I like to listen and hear what people say. On the floor of the Senate, when people were talking of North Senators, South Senators, East Senators, and West Senators, I am on record I say that I am just a Senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I am not saying it here, I said it when it matters, on the floor of the Nigeria Senate. Number two, I did hard calls to speak about a month ago, that he tried to understand our security challenges that we face. We must locate the details of the failure of political leadership. And I mean political leadership, including potential politicians here, who have resources to do all of those things that are convenient for them so to do, but refuse, they lack the will to make what I consider to be the most important investment, namely to resolve that Never should a child be born in this country and deny the access to go to school. And we must not make laws that we don't have the political will to enforce and identify the universal basic education law under which every child ought to go to school. And if a family or a parent deny the child the right to go to school, there are penalties. How come no parents have been uh, brought to before any magistrate court or Alicali court or customary court and he charged for that offense. And I said, as a former governor, I was a member of the National Economic Council where state governors, some state governors, I must emphasize some, argue that they do not have the resources to pay 50% subsidy in order to ensure that the children of the poor go to school, even where those governors are sending their own children abroad. And what we should do, sir, is that when we talk and you don't mention your name, everybody becomes a suspect. If you are afraid, give me your, the fact that you are very vocal, you are independent, you cannot be dismissed, you cannot be promoted or demoted. If you are afraid to mention the name of a governor, who, a former governor, who breached the law, and a city governor who used immunity to cover a governor that lost immunity, where will the courage come from? This sophistry of saying we can name the child of a poor man who still a goat, but we are afraid to measure the name of a big man who breached the law, that for me is at the root of our problem. Number two, Bishop Kuka, I also think that religion has been added to our burden of problems. When people preach that if you believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, he will deliver you from poverty, that's a lie. <laughs> we know it. And I see them every day, and I think uh, I follow them, make the point that people are setting up business centers, and they cover themselves by saying they are pastors. And in every donation that is being made in church, when the big man dies, that is where Reverend Fathers and pastors, we identify the rich people to remind us that the church has not been completed. And all those who are to donate are invariably public officers. From their salaries, 
everybody is contributing to the confusion that we find ourselves in. And I was worried by what word you used at the beginning. Nobody spoke on it. And I think you were trying to be internationally correct. You both try to be. You should be correct within the context of Nigeria value system. Where you spoke to, regardless of sexual orientation, no. That is fashionable in the West. In Nigeria, sexual orientation matters. A man should not sleep with a man. And a woman should not sleep with a woman. If they do, it must not be acknowledged by the Nigeria state. We must discourage your wife because if you begin to use that regardless, it matters. I will not. I'm sorry for any people, those who have subscribed to Western values. I would deplore any man or a woman or support or vote for or vote because of his sexual orientation. I need to know it. So that there are core values to Nigeria that we must defend. Number two, when people talk about this restructuring, you know, um, local government elections and so on. Unfortunately, truth be told, there is no local government election. There is no local government that is elected. You can speak to the formality where results are written or where blatantly no, no, no pretext was made. And therefore, people are just put into office. You don't need law to enforce this. When I was chairman of, of, of APC, I told President Buhari, invite all the governors and invite the National Association of uh, Local Government, Local Government, and ask the governors what are they doing with the allocation that is given to them. Gentlemen, the law can never capture everything. What we need to reform is not the constitution. What we need to reform is our value system. Our commitment to strong ethics that this is not fair. If you ask me, my background is to be suspicious about laws because they represent the thinking of the aggregate views of the ruling elite. They do not necessarily translate to fairness and justice. And I see contradiction from your explanations. You refer to a Supreme Court or judicial system that declares somebody uh, uh, officially elected because of international of the party and some other people who also went through the same system and they were free. If called that oppressed like that, I also give it the responsibility to appoint INEC. Will the bias that we see in their pronouncement, will they be free from not negotiating at night before they break and then they appoint somebody? At the heart of our problem, if you ask me, sir, I have been an observer, I've been a player, and I'm seeing the system is the issue of corruption. Whether whoever appoints. I never knew until Mr. Trump became president of the US. I didn't know that a US president can hire and fire the chief of CIA or the FBI because of the way in which a CIA man was reported to have tapped and listened to conversation of US president. And he knows that he can be fired. So it is not about the law. It's about a society where people seek to defer privileges, I mean, defer their jobs. If, we die, not the people, if you are not ready to die for something, you will die for nothing. <laughs> that for me is at the heart of it, the courage. And lastly, sir, this thing you call inclusion. If we reduce it to basic ABC, you will find that people are looking at Federal Canada Commission, how many Igbos are in employment, how many Yorubas, how many outsiders, even with the forgotten majority? Because the forgotten majority is the subtotal of all the minorities that are one of them. Truth is, sir, when I came to Kaduna, and I'm very proud of this, and it should tell the whole story, I didn't know anybody in Kaduna, and I slept in a police station for three consecutive nights before I found accommodation with some Gwari people inside the bush. They didn't care where I come from. But the point is, as we pursue liberal economy policies, because we, ne we need to have a holistic view as to how we got here. Like a German chancellor once told me, a, a German consul general, when you underdevelop a nation, all the industries are closed, warehouses have become churches. All those workers who were working in Kaduna, their jobs, factories closed, over 30,000 30, workers lost their job which means times two, 60,000. An average of four families over 100,000. 
The same thing in Kano, the same thing in Lagos, the same thing in Naba, the same thing in Polaco. These are victims of wrong, wrong industrial and trade policies. We must revise these things. When I got a job in Kaduna, nobody cares whether I was from Edo, whether I was from Lagos, and I found everybody working everywhere. For as long as 10 people are chasing 1,000 jobs, when all the objective criteria has been used to identify the 10 and you can't find it, where you come from, naturally become an answer. If you are the speaker as represented here, even the personal appointment we have in our offices, do they reflect federal character? They don't. Everybody be from his own place. That is the truth. But I do play, I do pray that we get the right policies in place. Go and ask that good thing. Don't ask him, go to the refinery and do federal character, because you will find that more non northern people are working for Dagote Refinery. Because he needs the skills. But because the private sector is not working, it's completely destroyed based on our liberal economic policies. The only business is that is politics. I will want to try and manage poverty. We can never have equity in poverty. May we have equity in prosperity.